Welcome to Pens and Tea, everybody. My name is Carrie, and today we're talking about a coffee tea and the Waterman Hemisphere. So the tea that we're going to be talking about today is coffee Puera Puera. I have no idea how to pronounce that, but it is delicious. It is, even for coffee addicts, go crazy for this rich and decadent laced tea with real coffee beans. Why am I talking so fast? Well, because this one has a high caffeine content. And for somebody like me, who doesn't generally drink caffeine, it goes woo, right in there. This tea, everybody, is a Puera tea. I don't know how to pronounce that, but that's what it is. And as you can see, real coffee beans in this bad boy. Basically, have you ever had a, um, you know, French vanilla kind of coffee or something like that? That's basically what this is, without all the muss and fuss of, like, steaming your milk and all that crap that I ain't ever gonna do. Um, <laughs> calm down. Um, basically what a, a puera tea is, this is a black tea, but it's fermented longer than regular black tea is, so it will punch you in the face. Uh, <laughs> it's very strong. <clears throat> uh, it's a heavy, a heavy tea. Um, if you're in the mood for like a light tea, like the Jade Citrus Mint that I reviewed a while back, this is not for you. This is a heavy, heavy tea. Um, I don't know how far I can tilt that. But it's heavy, it's thick, it essentially tastes like um, a coffee almost um, that has like a hazelnutty vanilla kind of finish to it. So if you don't like anything like that, stay away. But if you're a really big coffee drinker and you enjoy, um, you know, tea as well, this is kind of a good combo of the two. I still put a bunch of sugar in it, I still put loads of milk in it. Um, but if you want to drink it solo, you can, absolutely, you can do whatever you'd like. But it is a heavy tea. Essentially, this is supposed to be like the bridge between coffee and tea. Um, so, I mean, there's really nothing else I can describe it other than it tastes like a French vanilla coffee from like a Tim Hortons or a Starbucks or something like that. Um, I believe it is $7.98 per 50 grams of tea. Um, you put a better teaspoon, teaspoon and a half into your boiling water and you let it steep for about four to seven minutes depending on how strong you like it. So the Waterman Hemisphere, guys, oh boy. There's a lot of good things about it, a lot of not so good things about it. I'm gonna try and break this down relatively quickly for you all. Pros, pretty smooth writer, absolutely. For a steel nib, for a relatively small steel nib, I actually really enjoy the way that it writes. It's very smooth and um, it's easy to clean because it is a cartridge converter pen. So if you get the bulb syringe, just that I showed in my uh, pen cleaning video, just, you know, squish her on through and you're good to go. So it cleans out very nicely. Um, it's well balanced um, when you hold it in your hand when it's not posted. For me, when I do post it, it's a push to post, it becomes ever so slightly back weighted. Um, I don't have huge hands for guys, you know, I would maybe recommend posting it because then it's going to be a little bit more hefty for you. Um, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, it has, does have a very nice snap cap uh, efficiency, if you want to call it that. You really hear that affirmation that your pen is closed. Um, the entire body is stainless steel, so it's very sleek. Um, which I like the look of. Um, and since I just dropped the pen, um, it's not going to break. If I can pick the pen up, there we go. Um, now, there are quite a lot of cons that I've found. So that's basically a list of... Oh, and the other um, pro to this as well is that it's basically the only pen that I have, other than my Lamy Studio, which I've also done a video on, um, that will actually fit in a pen loop. Um, because it is crazy, crazy thin, y'all. So that basically brings me into my negatives about this pen. It is crazy, crazy thin. Holy smoke. So this is my finger. <laughs> now, I mean, I got, I got chunky hands. I got meaty sausage fingers. But still, it is banana cakes. I mean, if I pull a Lamy Safari and I put that next to it, just check that out. Yeah, it's thinner than a Lamy Safari. So just be aware of that, which means that when you are holding it, the grip is so, so narrow 
that, I mean, it's not, it, I don't like this pen to write with for more than a quick note because it's not comfortable. Absolutely not comfortable. And even though it's a plastic grip that does have a bit of a taper at the end, it's very slippery. It's a very slippery plastic grip. And there are two seams that run down the um, section. So when you hold it, you do feel this, the plastic seam. It kind of annoys me. Um, the cap, while it is a pro that is definitely secure, um, you really gotta pull it off. And because of that, it pulls ink out of the nib and the feed into the cap. Not that you can really see it, especially since I have a gray ink in here, but it will pull ink out uh, every time. So much so that it'll even end up on the nib sometimes. Um, so that's annoying. Um, like I said, it's very back heavy when it's capped for me. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a proprietary cartridge. It is a Waterman cartridge on the inside. Um, and I have tried a standard international and it didn't work for me. I've heard stories of it working for other people, but it didn't for me. So I don't know. Um, one thing that also annoys me that when it's closed is it will still twist and when it when it twists around like that, it undoes the grip section from the body. And that also really annoys me. Um, and probably the most annoying thing for me um, is that this will depend heavily on the ink that you put into it um, as to whether or not it writes dry or it gets crusty towards the nib. Um, because the cap will move, I just, I don't feel like there's a, a good enough seal on it. Even though I know it's closed, you hear that snap every time. Um, it just doesn't seem to do anything for me. Um, so if you put a wet ink in here, like a Noodler's Eel series, um, what else is, is a wet pen? Um, actually I have Gerba Grease Nuage. Um, in here right now, and as far as a Jayerba ink goes, that's a pretty darn wet ink. Um, but I've had other Noodler's inks. I've had um, probably one of the worst ones I could put in here was a Jayerba Rouge Hematite in here. Don't do it. Don't do it. It gets crazy gummy at the uh, the nib and the feed section. Um, that it just, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> it's not good. Um, you know, so it, it's not like it's an expensive pen. It's a relatively cheap pen. You can find it in Canada for about 50 bucks, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. Um, you know, it's steel finish. The It's got palladium finish on the like trim and whatnot. Um, but unless you have really small hands... I would not recommend this to really anybody, to be honest. Um, given the choice, I would not buy it again. But I could see somebody liking it if they had a small hands. Um, this does come in loads of other finishes as well. It's not just stainless steel. You can get like lacquered finishes. You can get like, you know, resin, that kind of stuff. Gold trim, silver trim, all that kind of stuff. Um, but this is the cheapest version that you can find, especially if you're on like an Amazon or something like that. Um, the stainless steel is the cheapest. So, you know, I don't know if it's worth it to me to go get a more expensive resin version to compare. I really do not enjoy it. Like I said, it's a decent writer and you'll see that in a second, but meh, that's how I feel about this pen. Meh. Oh, that I was using, I posted that on my Instagram, pens and tea. Uh, pens underscore and underscore T. Um, but let's get rocking and rolling here. Oops, kind of in the way there, sorry guys. So it does write really smoothly. Um, this is a fine nib, by the way. Um, you know, so I got no issues there.
then it definitely doesn't really have any issue keeping up with the flow. Like I said, this is a slighter um, wet wetter ink. Um, this Gerba uh, Grease Nuage, Gris Nuage. Um, so that definitely helps. Having a drier ink in here, you will notice that if you scribble like this, you will get a few skips here and there. Not very often, but you'll get them every once in a while. But with a drier ink, you will have hard starting. Um, this one with this ink, I haven't noticed, um, you know, much hard starting with this ink. Um, but with other inks, absolutely, I've had that. Um, it's a pretty hard steel nib, so you're not going to really get any line variation. As a general rule of thumb with steel nibs, the smaller your nib is, the less likely you are to be able to actually get any line variation. Um, and that pen rolls like crazy. So as a very quick comparison, this is a platinum nib next to the Waterman Hemisphere nib. So it's definitely a teeny weeny little nib there. Um, so I mean, it's a, it's like I said, it's a decent writer. Um, it's relatively smooth and that's nice, but I would not recommend it. I have heard lovely things about Waterman in general. Um, I've heard lovely things about other Waterman pens, but this one, sorry guys, I'm just not a giant fan. But that's it for me. I hope to see you all on Friday um, where we're going to talk about more pens and tea goodness. Guys, if you liked it, please subscribe. If you liked it a lot, hit that thumbs up. And as always, leave any questions, comments, or concerns down in the comments section. I will answer them and let's rock and roll. Cheers, guys.